China does a lot of things different compared to the West, and there's certainly no exception when it comes to AI and LLMs. Of course, as an American, I can't really agree with how they've used AI to, in certain cases, subjugate their own citizens, but the sheer amount of research just in terms of volume, the relative quality, and the advancements that China has made in their academic institutions when it comes to the world of AI and LLMs is incredible. And this is especially when you take into consideration the fact that most of the world has decided they want to make it really hard for China to do this. And we're not going to get into those reasons in this video, although I think they're important. But the biggest star, you know, they don't have access to the latest NVIDIA GPUs. Some would argue, yes, that they're just renting all of them on Vast and RunPod. But what I will say is it's really cool to see work come out of China because the core tenets of how they do AI is just different. To think that OpenAI and Western companies, especially when it comes to open source models, are always ahead is not exactly right. And again, I think people really underestimate just the sheer amount of research coming out of China. For instance, there has been more research that has come out of China in the last quarter than roughly came out of the entire US in the last year. And there are different ways of measuring this, but it's undeniable that there's a lot of big thinking with LLMs going on in China. Now, the model I want to go over today is called Quen, and we've seen multiple versions of Quen in the past. So this was always a model that was curiously capable. And by curiously capable, I mean, it just came out of nowhere. So Quen is a model that's created by Alibaba, one of China's biggest tech companies. Obviously, they have a lot of data. They have access to basically the best infrastructure in China, both in terms of internet and compute. The first time we got a taste of this was actually in September of 2023, so not very long ago, where they released Quen 14B. And at the time, open source models of this size were pretty novel. What's cool is at the time, we knew it was trained uh, at around 3 trillion tokens, and it came in five different versions, uh, base, chat, code, math, and vision. So it was one of the first 14 billion parameter multimodal models we got to see. And what's really cool is it was quite good. It was already within shooting distance of what ChatGPT could do. And at the time, it was one of the first models to actually implement a chat model when that wasn't really a common thing. Now it's really common. And at the time, GPT-4 was actually also out. And again, what was kind of cool with this is they had a really cool way to tokenize in a different way. And it was one of the first times we got to see language translation being kind of a novel thing and seeing a model that was trained with an entirely Chinese data set as opposed to what we do in the West, which I'll get to later. So the model I want to talk about today is called Quen 1.5. So it's the next iteration of Quen, not Quen 2 just yet, but they obviously wanted to tell us what they've been working on. And the biggest announcements here is, again, with sticking to the Chinese doing things differently and not just being able to buy, you know, blower style RTX 4090s on Alibaba that have been mangled from other 4090s on the custom PCBs. They decided to stick with that theme and release 32 different versions of this model. So the largest being a 72 billion parameter model, which is base and chat, and then a number of other versions going all the way down to half a billion parameters, which you can run on mobile devices and MacBooks. The core focus for this new model was better alignment despite still slightly trailing behind GPT-4 Turbo. And what's interesting is the, the, the biggest things to look at here are the largest models, the smallest models, and the 7 billion parameter models. And then specifically, um, some that have a very long context length, which curiously is something that Quen has always been quite good at. And if you look at these carefully, you can actually see that Quen is in striking distance of GPT-4 in a lot of these areas, and, and also in a lot of areas actually is beating GPT-3.5. Now. I think it's important to note that a lot of this only happens when you have really long context lengths, but that's not a quirk, it's actually a feature of this Quen model. And to be clear, the 32 different versions are predominantly broken into eight, six different sizes, which is half a billion, 1.8B, 4B, 7B, 14B, and 72B. So a curious jump all the way from 14 to 72. I should also mention that it's beating Mistral Medium in a number of areas. And again, it has multilingual support for both of these models. What I will say again is it's interesting to interact with this model. Um, interacting with this model feels a lot like trying to order something complex on Alibaba as an English speaker, even though everyone wants to kind of reach the same thing. So what was Quen built with? One of the drawbacks of early versions of Quen, even given its capabilities, were that the data it used was just kind of old. We didn't really know if this was because data collection on the Chinese internet is just different, and to be frank, it is, but 
at least we know now that Quen 1.5 is trained on really recent data. And it actually knows the difference between PPO and DPO, at least up until of May 29 of 2023. So again, the bad news is if you're an English speaker, it responds to some Chinese words with this like censorship character, as far as I understand. I'm not a Chinese speaker, so this is what it's been explained to me. The meaning is correct, but it's kind of annoying to have to sift through it. And they actually mentioned this specific form of clipping in their blog post, which I'll link below if you want to dig into a bit further. And there are also some curious things to talk about here when it comes to how good the half billion parameter model is compared to the seven billion parameter model and what it's good and bad at. So one thing that we do know, and I've also tried this, is it's not very good at writing. So prose is something that for these Chinese models, um, it, it's pro, Chinese prose and English prose, it, it, those words mean different things. And with LLMs, they are built on language. So understanding meaning in one language can vary substantially in others. Um, for instance, if, if you've ever studied Hebrew or you've looked at um, languages like German, you'll understand how much deeper meaning some of these words have. And in the West, most of the models we get are trained on English. So that's kind of a base logical truth. And in China, these models are just different. So prose is tough, hoding is quite good. And the one thing that structurally is very, very good is function calling. Now, I'm not gonna get into exactly what function calling in this video. Basically that is when you create a task or a repetitive thing an LLM will do, sometimes you can actually write this as a function in Python if you're you know, working with these in a, in a more raw form outside of just chat. And it's how the model understands that, that is a repeatable task that it's done before and then understanding when it's done that task, good or bad, and really just having a coherence of what the task is. So for instance, um, make a list for groceries or look at the last six messages I have and summarize them. Those kinds of things could be considered tasks. And we know that Quen 1.5 is really good, even the half billion parameter base model. And some would say, given um, what we know about the database, the data sets that were used, it's really, really good, um, especially compared to other models that are of this size. And small models generally struggle with this. What's also cool is NOS Research has already started digging into this. And we can see here that Interstellar Ninja says on another eval set sample, from a Glaive function calling data set, the model score is 84%. And again, you know, we have to use benchmarks like this because there's so many different things you can do with these models. And when we prod them like this, we start to get a sense of what we can do. So for instance, a common function would be, or a function prompts would be, I need to know the distance between New York and Los Angeles. And how repeatable it is at these functions is a function of how good it actually is. Now, another really cool thing is you can just run this on M1 right now. And I'm pretty sure if you have an M3, you can probably get close to running the 7B model on this if someone has quantized it. It's been about a day, so we're gonna see those pretty quickly. But what's cool is I have an M3 and an M1, and just like Prince Kanama says here, I'm actually able to run this pretty quickly, um, faster than a lot of other even quantized models, and it works pretty well. If you're cool running a Chinese AI on your computer, all good, but um, yeah, it's quite interesting. Also, these are all on Hugging Face, very easy to use. And again, this is the goofy list of how long this is. So when I said there are 32 versions, I really wasn't quit kidding. We start um, with the 7B models up here because these are really what they're most proud of, I think in terms of their base efficiency and where you can run them. And then you see here, we get down to the largest models and then slowly we get down to uh, the really small half billion parameter models. I'll also link to their blog here, which is actually all in English. And I think this was written by a native speaker, so it's actually pretty informative. They're not really active here. This is kind of just another place to park their code and point you to their WeChat, but I think it's actually really pretty interesting. So currently the only active demo is Quen 1.572B chat, and I'm gonna try to get some more footage of the um, half a billion parameter model as well as the seven billion parameter model because I think they're a more accurate representation of what we can do. But what's cool is they have this demo on Hugging Face that I'll link below. So let's hear it. So we'll just assume yes, I am their helpful assistant. Uh, let me see here. I need to order a specific kind of gear from a supplier in China. What kind of specifications should I provide? And where should I provide extra context if I'm... So obviously this is a pretty beefy model since we're running the full 72B model. So we'll see how long this takes. It also just told me to duplicate this base since it might be backed up with a lot of people trying to use it right now. And here we go. 
Now, one thing that I've actually dealt with before is a lot of Chinese suppliers will close down at or a little bit before Chinese New Year. So let me ask this. So, and for those of you who are curious, DFM is pretty much just a process of validating uh, part designs you send over so they actually are sure they can produce them. And it's one of three steps you need to actually produce plastic parts or really any kind of part in China. And here we go. And you know, actually the consultant I've used before, these are actually pretty similar to what he was saying. So advanced payment is one of them. Uh, some of these terms are actually kind of curious. So what's cool is it looks like you can use Quen 1.5B to actually act as a trade lawyer uh, assistant uh, in, in ways that are almost as good as a person, not, not really, but uh, I'm impressed. This is actually pretty intelligible. And given that this was trained on Chinese language data, this is pretty good. So definitely check this out. Again, it's linked below and hopefully we'll start to see more demos emerge as this model is just out for a bit longer. And again, the other cool thing is this is all 100% um, open access. So this is not kind of gated like OpenAI or Claude. Again, it's a huge step forward, even given some of the geopolitical implication for open source AI being the most powerful. And I think it's a really curious geopolitical take for China to also be releasing this. I think they might be showing this just to say, hey, we can do this and we don't really care to, re we can just release this because we don't care. Let me know what you think in the comments if you think maybe they have a bit of a different angle going on with that. Now, I've gotten some people asking like where if I could um, host an API or use an API platform, what I would use. I do not have an agreement or any kind of collaboration with Together AI, but I use generally Together AI um, the most. If not for Mistral stuff, I just use Mistral. So if you want to play around with this right now and not have to set up hardware and do that, uh, definitely check out Together AI. I think they have some of the best pricing available for these models. Um, and also they, they get all these spun up so quickly and, and their infra is awesome. So I'm curious what you guys think about this model. You know, what would you maybe use it for? What are you excited to try? Are you going to benchmark or wait for further quantization to go on? I'm really curious what you think. I know I don't really cover a lot of Chinese research, but I found it quite interesting. And it's a very interesting subset of the kind of China that I think we'd see in terms of technology as an adversary a lot. And I will say this is very interesting given the recent statements from the State Department, where uh, we think in the next few months, even the next few weeks potentially, the US is going to take action to restrict Chinese nationals from using virtual private servers and rented GPUs for machine learning in the US, which could have really interesting implications for people who run uh, their GPUs on platforms like TensorDoc or Vast or RunPod. So let me know what you, what you guys think in the comments. I think this is pretty cool. As always, if you like this video, um, please like, share, and subscribe. Most importantly, that helps us out a ton. And we'll see you in the next video.